Talking with Topher is sponsored by slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and naturalbossnh.com. More on that later. Let's get in episode 99. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back. It is February 21st, 2022. It's 50 degrees outside. The sun is shining, and I'm excited. But before I get into all of that, thank you. That's right. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to the new subscribers. It is so exciting to see more and more of you subscribing to the channel. You are what keeps me coming back here week after week, so I greatly appreciate all all of you, and I just have to say thank you. Um, if you want to help out some more with the podcast, give a thumbs up for the video, share, rate, review, and of course, leave comments. Um, if you are new to the podcast, that's right, you're stopping by, you're just checking it out, it's your first time, well, welcome. If you want to help the podcast, subscribe, all right? That's the most important thing that you can do. It means everything to me and practically nothing to you. Um, if you're listening, Always leave a five-star rating, leave a review, um, and if you are watching, leave comments in the comments section, uh, share, rate, review, all of that stuff helps the podcast grow, and I need all of your help to be doing that. If you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook, Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I'm on there every week, almost all week, trying to give extra content throughout the week. Um, and again, that's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And then, of course, if you want to get more involved with the podcast, send an email to the official email of the podcast. That's T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. Talking with Topher at gmail.com. Uh, you have an opportunity to get some free slowdown merch. Send in your story with slow down in the subject line and send that on over to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. And now, with all that out of the way, let's get into today's episode, right? A lot of the stuff going on today has got me into some stinking thinking, you know, closeted drinking, closeted anything. Um, when you, when you do something, right, say, say in my case, it's drinking, it's drinking. So I would drink, everybody would be fine with it. I'd have my episodes and then all of a sudden people were like, "Eh, maybe you shouldn't, maybe you, eh," you know, you lay off of it, whatever. And then all of a sudden something really bad happens. And then everybody's on the same page where they're like, no, we can't be around you if you're drinking. And those are people that you want to be around, right? So now you take your addiction to the next level. And that next level is hiding it from everybody. Now, drinking, I personally do not find drinking an easy one to hide from people. Everybody's like, oh, well, you could go with uh, the, the, the vodka, right? You could go with vodka. You could go with gin, uh, low in scent, this and that. But eventually you get to a point where you think You can hide it, okay? And I think that's where um, the disconnect is, is that we think we can hide our addiction from people, but you have to remember that people remember what you were like when you were fucked up. And when you get fucked up secretively, you still are getting fucked up. So, I mean... Eventually, they're going to see you all fucked up, right? This is, this is how it goes. And I know I'm off to a great start. Not even five minutes in, and we're already swearing up a storm. This will probably get taken down or something. Um, but I don't care because this is, this is real. Um, this is very real. You are trying to hide the fact that you are getting messed up in front of all the people that I've already seen you messed up. And so I don't know about anybody else out there, but what I used to do when I was 
in this position is I had alcohol uh, hidden everywhere. I remember um, all the way back to, well, 1997, 98, um, you know, I had a bunch of blackouts. Um, There were some parties, some New Year's Eve stuff, Christmas parties that were just absolutely ruined um, by me. Absolutely ruined. I, I, I got so drunk at a Christmas party that, you know, it wasn't even a, it was a, it was a, it was a Christmas party at the place that I worked and I wound up getting so drunk that customers were like, what is happening? You know what I mean? I had to be taken off the sales floor. I think I talked about this, um, in the past, but I don't know if I really got into my closeted drinking, but all the stuff going on today, I'm like, man, I know I'm not going to, but I'm telling you, I could really use a fucking drink right now. This stuff is so overwhelming. It's so depressing. Everything is just crazy. And I was like, no, you can't, you can't go back to drinking. And then I was like, well, you, you could, and nobody would know if you just hit it. And I was like, what am I doing? Right. I'm having this argument with myself and Man, I just started thinking about all the times that I tried to hide my drinking. And I started thinking of all the areas of where I used to hide my alcohol. You know, where I was, where at one point I was living with, um, you know, uh, this girlfriend. And then um, at her parents' house. And I would hide. I would hide alcohol uh, all over the, the room I was allowed to use. I would hide it in my in my girlfriend's room, I would hide it in the basement where we hung out. I would hide it um, in my car if I needed to hide it in my car. And then it was like when I moved back in with my parents, again, it happened. It, this happened over and over and over again for me. And I don't know if this is a, a reoccurring story for other people out there, but, um, you know, I was I, I would hide it wherever I could. And when um I was living in Penacook and renting out the top apartment to uh, this girl's grandparents that we lived above. Um, you know, I would also. Oh, that was the other thing too. And this this also uh, goes from story to story. If I didn't, let's just say, uh, you know, the girlfriend at the time uh, back in ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one. Um, if I had to quit drinking and I couldn't buy any alcohol, right? Because, you know, uh, being with the girlfriend 24 seven at work, at home, the whole thing, you're not finding much time to disappear and go buy stuff. I would actually leave the store on my lunch break, go buy a beer, drink the beer and then go back to work. And I, I've done this for years. I mean, this carried all the way up until I, ba- until 2027, when I finally, uh, 2027, 2007, uh, uh, when I, no, I mean, I didn't even quit then. I mean, this has been a reoccurring occurrence my entire drinking career. Yeah. I mean, uh, now that I'm really thinking about it and speaking of it, there are so many more flashbacks coming. Um, so but I would steal my alcohol, right? I would I would go into their liquor cabinet. I would find uh, alcohol and I would pour it into something. And it wasn't even like I was like, oh, I need to just take this one. I would take a water bottle, you know, and I'd pour a little bit of vodka and I'd pour a little bit of whiskey. I'd pour a little bit of gin. I'd put a little bit of rum. And I'd put them all in the same fucking bottle. And then I would just hide that bottle. And I would, I would, I would hide that. And so when I was living above uh, the grandparents there, I, I mean, we had full access to the downstairs. So I would, I would go downstairs, you know, do things, right? Do th- I'm, I'm doing something. I'm doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in there scoping out where the alcohol is and stealing from their cabinet. And don't you know, I always got caught. I got caught by the first girlfriend's parents. That turned into a shit show. I denied it over and over again. And then, uh, you know, 
uh, cameras weren't quite what they are today, um, but back then they still were uh, something that you could acquire if you had enough money. Um, surveillance cameras were not as uh, high quality as they are, but they still worked. And I got caught. You know, to make a long story short, I got caught because they put cameras up, right? Because they knew that their alcohol was disappearing and they knew that it was me. But I kept denying it. And so, therefore, uh, they had to actually catch me. Well, same thing happened at this place. I, I, I was stealing the gin, mostly. Just all gin, all the time. Um, and, and they were burning through it. So what they started doing was is they started putting magic marker and tape on their bottles. So the one time I go down there, and that thing is all taped up. It's got marker on it. And I was like, oh, shit. So I figured out a way around that. And I did this so much to so many people. Um, and, and it all has to do with the same thing. It's, it's hiding the addiction, hiding uh, what you're doing. You are, um, you know, everybody's uncomfortable with what you're doing. So you're like, oh, okay, well, then maybe you won't be uncomfortable if I just hide it from you. You know, I remember being able to go into the living room and I could reach underneath the couch cushion and there was, you know, nips or something. And then like I could go into the closet and in the closet I had a fifth hiding in the closet somewhere so that I could be like, oh, I got to go in the closet. You go in the closet, take a couple swigs. I had a little bit of gum or Listerine or something. Or I, at that time I smoked butts. So I was like, oh, I'm all set, you know. And of course it never worked out, right? Because you, you start off, I think, I start off the same way I always start off. Everything's controlled. Everything is minimalized. Everything is calculated. And as time goes on, sometimes it didn't take much time at all. Other times it would take a couple months. So, you know, you eventually get to the point where you're out of control. And of course, happened every time. I mean, uh, when I finally got caught, uh, closet drinking, uh, when I'm living in Penacook, um, you know, I left tater tots in the oven, went and sat down on the couch, futon, whatever, watching TV and I fell asleep. Well, that shit caught on fire. It, 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 it was smoking and burning out the back of the oven. It was, I mean, it, I damaged the fucking wall, the ceiling, uh, the pan. I mean, everything was ruined. It, the whole house stunk of burnt up tater tots. And that's how I got caught. They, they had to get into the apartment because there was a fire alarm going off. And I'm sitting, I'm fucking passed out with a bottle on the floor and, and a fire going on. So, I don't know. I wanted to bring this up because I, I know people are dealing with a lot today. And everything that's going on is either really confusing because if you're not on one side, you're on the other. And I don't think that's true. That's just the way everything is today. Uh, you know, if you're... If you're doing this then you're on this side if you're doing this then you're on that side and it's like no people just want to do uh whatever is going to be best for them and instead of that being that it's it's you're picking a side and I don't think anybody's picking a side for the most part I know a lot of people are picking sides I'm not saying that there's nobody picking sides but I don't feel like everybody has to be on one side or the other you know, and all of these uh, stressful things going on that you either agree with or disagree with uh, causes people to get extremely frustrated and upset and depressed and feel like they're not going to be able to make it from day to day, week to week. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very frustrating uh, when you feel um, alone. And I start having these thoughts and I'm like, wait a minute, do I, why do I, why am I feeling this way? It's because, you know, I'm not, 
uh, I'm not happy, right? I am not happy with what is going on. And the narrative of the news is just the world is falling apart. And then every now and then they'll put in like these these articles that show that, you know, people are not doing that bad to make up for the fact that the inflation is out of control. And they're like, well, inflation's not a big deal because everybody did so good during the pandemic. What? And so that frustrates me. That makes me upset. And then you have like uh, stuff going on where, um, you know, uh, people are upset about the mass restrictions or they're upset that the mass restrictions are going away. And then you're just trying to get a grasp of everything going on. And sometimes you just feel like you want to fucking give up because it doesn't matter what side you pick. You're always wrong. And I don't know why I feel this way because I will say that things were going well. They were going great. I had to put in a lot of work to figure everything out. And now with inflation and everything else that's going on, now uh, everything is falling apart again. And I don't understand why it's okay for them to do this to us. Why is it okay for you to constantly increase your prices to increase your profit when nobody is making any more money? And so these are the things that I'm getting upset about. And haven't they realized that this isn't the way to go? And this is why I get so frustrated and angry. And it makes me think that like, you know, I, and this is, this is stinking thinking. This is stinking thinking. And I'm not saying that I'm going this road. I'm just saying that it gets me thinking. And I'm like, well, maybe if I just do this, I'll be able to relax, but I know I'm not going to be able to relax. It's going to ruin everything. So, but I still start thinking about this. And then I started thinking about all the, all the times I would hide it from everybody and you know, how long it would take before it fell apart. And I just want to let you know that even though all these things are going on and, and, and people are drinking more, they're using, uh, whatever more, um, addictions higher suicide is is much higher now um people's livelihoods are gone or non-existent or in the middle of collapsing and they're falling apart and we're not and they're not feeling like they're getting any help you know we're too busy uh trying to take down joe rogan we're too busy worrying about the uh, Russia invading the Ukraine. We're too worried about whether or not um, 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 talking about transitioning to our younger students is more important than any of this. And that is how I feel right now. I feel like they just don't care. They're going to keep taking and taking and taking until what? There's nothing left to take? And I don't know why my brain always wants to go back to drinking, to forget and let go, um, because I know that that's not the right way to do it. But I know there's a lot of people out there dealing with the same shit that I'm dealing with right now, and they may not be dealing with it um, as well. You know, they're not dealing with it as well as I think I am. And I don't think I'm dealing with it that great I'm just making sure it doesn't destroy me. But at the same time, uh, if you are, are somebody who is, um, you know, everybody in your family, your friends, everybody knows that you shouldn't be doing whatever it is that you're doing. And now you, you find yourself hiding it from them. You're wherever, closets, beds, bathroom, ceiling tiles. I mean, you name it, I have found a hiding spot for it. Um, and, and I've used that hiding spot and I've done it at work. All, all my jobs, all of my jobs when I was drinking, all had hiding spots for alcohol. Um, you know, it was easy. The easiest place for me to drink was Walmart. 
be honest with you. I could stick that stuff in my locker. I was I was always on the move. I could stick it in my machines. I mean, it, it, it's insane where the addict's mind will go to get the addiction, you know? But I want you to know that if you are here, if you are here and you are actually doing this right now, um, this is your addiction taking over. And you are actually telling yourself it's okay to do this, right? Because I know I did. Your, your, your addiction will override all your logical thinking. But if you're hiding anything, that is a problem, all right? It's a serious, serious problem because even though I used to disagree when I drank, but drinking alone is an issue. And I'm not, ex- I can't explain exactly why. I think it's because you end up going down this dark hole and then you don't even know how fucked up you are until it's too late, right? You get in the car, you got to go to the store, what, whatever have you. you. You're by yourself and you make a poor decision. Now, granted, you may not have hurt anybody or involved anybody in your bad decisions, but you have to remember, somebody's going to have to drive you around. Somebody's going to have to get you to those meetings. Somebody's going to have to put you before themselves so that you can get out of this place that you're in. And I kind of want to help somebody stop before you before you get there. So, you know, I, I, I'm, not sh- I'm not 100% sure what can be done to help you, you know, because if you are at this point, you have a problem. And the only reason you don't think you have a problem is because nobody knows because you're hiding it and you yourself are telling yourself it's okay because nobody knows. And that is the problem, which is why I started thinking about all the stuff I used to do to hide my alcohol. And I was just like, oh, man, this is a weird road for me to go down. But it's also kind of intriguing because then I started thinking about, like, how how, how, how creative my mind got to feed my addiction, you know? And it is. It's true. Addicts have extremely... Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they have extremely um, in innovative minds. I mean, if you really think about it, hiding alcohol, um, hiding the fact that you're getting it, hiding when you drink it, hiding when how you cover it up, or maybe uh, you you're you're hiding something else, or uh, you're you're. You know, maybe uh, this was another scenario where I could drink in front of people, but I would hide other things and I would go and drink those other things to get me to where I wanted to be. And, you know, as a as as a pot smoker, when I was younger and I enjoyed smoking pot, I would have to figure out ways to smoke pot and I would have to uh, uh, dig out apples. I remember my, my, my teenage years, I had a four foot bong. So I went to Spencer's gifts, right? And I bought one of those four foot long, uh, uh, lights, uh, the, the light slip covers. So it's a light slip cover. And what we did was, is we took, uh, uh, electric tape and put it on the part where we were going to put our mouth, you know, give it a rubber, a soft part for your mouth. And then um, I had to have uh, my friend's older sister go to a smoke shop and get me a downspout and a slide, right? And then I had to come up with a uh, design for the bottom that had no glue. Um, you know, you don't want to use any any glues or adhesives. I knew that. You don't want the water filtrating uh, through adhesive, that would be horrible to breathe in. Um, but I, I, so we would use like, uh, uh, 
waterproofing tape or water sealing tape. And then we had to drill the hole. We had to put the slide in. There was no rubber grommets or anything. So you could actually use a glue uh, for that because you're not inhaling it and it was on the outside. But I think, again, we used some type of adhesively, uh, some strong tape. Uh, uh, probably all electrical tape because I used to be able to, you could heat it up and really get it to stick. Um, so I turned this four foot, uh, light sleeve into a four foot bong that I would leave in my trunk and drive around and go to my friend's house and we would fucking use the four foot bong and, and, and then, you know, gravity bongs, everybody, anybody remember making gravity bongs? I've made a gravity bong out of a two liter, uh, those bigger ones. I think they were three liters. Um, the, the, the gravity bong with the, with the big water jug. And then, uh, we got so creative one time, my friend, uh, made the gravity bong, but then he hooked up a vacuum to it. So we put this giant Liberty bell on top that would take like, God, I think it used to take like four or five grams. You put that in there, you'd attach the vacuum, you turn the vacuum on, hit it with the lighter it would so pull it all in, and as you're pulling up, the vacuum's feeding it, and you're just feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, and then you throw the vacuum in reverse. Pull the bowl off, push down, and put that vacuum in reverse, and four people could hit that thing at once. So if you think about it, the addict's mind is very inventive. And we will come up with any way possible to feed that addiction. And I think that's incredible and scary all at the same time. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell that? It's right here at the bottom of the screen. Or you can click the link in the description below the video. I love this website. I can't express this enough. Look, they got brand new winter jackets for your skiing and snowboarding needs. They've got brand new skateboards. Get some socks. All right. They got hats. They got leggings. They got t-shirts. They got gloves. They've got everything you're looking for for all the seasons, all year round. All their products are great quality at a great price and you can only get them right here. That's right. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell it? It's right here at the bottom of the screen, or you can click the link in the description below the video. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we are open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m., and you can give us a call, 603-814-4171. We have got it all. That's right. Flavored juices, menthol juices, flavored menthol juices, disposables, rechargeable disposables, a CBD, HHC, THCP, CBD, loose flower. I mean, we have just got everything you're looking for today at New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and I'm excited to tell you that we have everything in stock. Everything's going out as fast as it's coming in, and it's an exciting time. All the juices are switching over to synthetic nicotine, which I think is going to be overall better for everything, and we have every possible way to help you get rid of those cigarettes. That's right. It, that's the whole point to vaping in the first place. Get rid of the cigarettes, and then hopefully get rid of nicotine. A lot easier said than done, but we are here to help you do it. That's right. Come and see us, the guys at the gallery, and we're going to help you get away from those cigarettes. All right? And you can do this here at New Hampshire Vape Gallery, located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. Feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. And as always, I look forward to seeing you there. NaturalBossNH.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. I love this website. I absolutely do love it. They got that foot and body soak that's great for melting those stressful days away. The body balm and the lip balm are great to help your cracked, dry skin 
uh, get some moisture back to it and heal that up. I love it. The salve, amazing. Worked great on my neck uh, when it was really dry and the cold. Oh, it was just, it was awful. And that salve did amazing. And they still have the beard oil. Yeah, they got beard oil, uh, two different scents, Woodsman's and Dapper. And then, of course, Feeling Rosy Foot and Bath Soak, six bucks on sale while supplies last. You can get all of this here at naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. Buy one or all six of these products today. All right, so we got some time. We're going to do some current events. I've got this one blew my mind, and there was two things that I was thinking about with this. Police chief reveals how a six-year-old girl was found alive under staircase two years after she was reported missing. Oh, my God. Now, I wanted to change the title of this segment to something else. And I can't quite think of a name for it. So if you think of anything, put it in the comments, you know. I'll go over them. I'll check them out and see what's going on. But I thought of two things. This child was reported missing at 2019 when she was four years old. They found her under a wooden staircase. All right. This poor little girl was abducted. And then stuffed under, they're not showing it. Where is it? There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. That staircase, right? So that's the staircase. And see, that this is the back side of the stair that connects to here. So there was two things about this that really, like, got me. Again, going back to addicts' minds, right? Addicts uh, will do anything to fill or feed their addiction. So whoever this psychopath is, they took their stairs and they took them apart. And then they put a hinge so that the stair could move. Now, how they hid the hinge, whatever, I'm sure it was very elaborate. They don't ever really show it closed. They only show it open. So all the hinges and stuff, I'm assuming, are on the inside. That way, when you push it back down, you don't see anything. But this person dismantled their stairs and made like a trap door so that you could hide things under the stairs. And I was like, oh, my God. Not, this is so disturbing, and at the same time, I mean, look at the ingenuity into turning that staircase into a a moving staircase to hide things under. Now, the fact that it was a child, and I'm sure things were, I'm just sure it, it was horrible. I'm sure it was horrible. Uh, I'm not saying anything about that, but what I am saying is the ingenuity in the stairs blew my mind. I was like, but the fact that he was hiding a kid or they were hiding a kid under the stairs for two and a half years is so disturbing, right? And I don't know if I'm alone here, but I think that person should not see the day of light ever. And the proper punishment would be two and a half years under a set of stairs. I think fair's fair. But the ingenuity to do it is wild. Right? I mean, it's it's disgusting and just blew my mind. Because it like it's it got me thinking about all the stuff that I would do to drink. And I'm like, oh my god, addicts' minds are the same. Our addictions are different, and I don't agree with this addiction at all. I think this is gross and disgusting. And anybody trying to okay this, 
um, uh, should be dragged out into the street and shot. And there are. There are people out there trying to make this okay, that it's okay for you to feel a certain way about a child. And that I find extremely uh, disturbing, and I don't agree with it at all. Um, But it's true. It's true. They are out there, and they are saying, they're calling themselves something. I don't remember what it is, but it's disgusting. It's wrong. And if you are attracted uh, to young kids, um, you know, let's, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you, but you need help. You need help. Because I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, that was the last thing on my mind. So, as an adult, it's just so gross. It's just so gross. But the stairs were so uh, crazy. It was crazy. Two and a half years. Can you imagine being under a set of fucking stairs for two and a half years? I can't. And I apologize. I'm going to get my nose looked at and stuff, and we're going to be taking care of that soon. All right, so this one... Uh, let's see. I wanted to watch the video on this because this is a predator could have sent hundreds of blackbirds crashing to their death in Mexico. Let's check this out. Wow. Look at them all fall. Holy shit. A flock of birds suddenly fell dead from the sky in northwestern Mexico. Chihuahua police reported finding nearly 100 yellowhead blackbirds which migrate from Canada to Mexico for the winter. A veteran told police the birds may have inhaled toxic fumes or been electrosed. What does that mean? Electrocuted? Authorities haven't confirmed what caused the sudden death. Wow. Look at all of them. That is insane. I I just... What? And see, this is why I want to change this segment is because I just read headlines and then I'm learning about what's happening at the same time that you are. So if you're watching this with me and you see that and you're like, why doesn't he know anything about the article? It's because I I, I don't have enough time to read all the articles and do uh, my due diligence. So I'm just reading headlines really and kind of reacting off of them so i'm thinking this is like maybe uh reacting to headlines maybe headline reactions i don't know i'm trying to come up with something for this because it's definitely i mean they are current events but i'm not being very current eventful right i'm not really like breaking it down for you I'm, i'm i'm figuring it out at the same time that i'm showing it to you but that is insane. So they have no idea why all these yellow blackbirds, yellow-headed blackbirds, fell in northwestern Mexico. That is insane. Man, they got to figure that out. I mean, and it was like, does that mean that they were, like, electrocuted? I don't know. That's insane to me. All right, here's another one that um, I don't think is ever going to happen. But they say it's going to. So I want to hear what they have to say because this has to do with my state and I'm waiting for them to legalize it. But they only want to be able to sell it through the liquor stores, which is what a friend told me two and a half years ago. He's like, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, New Hampshire signal, New Hampshire House signals bipartisan support for legalizing marijuana. But Bill faces bleak future. Under Bill, marijuana sales profits would go toward drug treatment and property tax relief. Really? You're going to give me relief on my property taxes? Well, that would be nice since you just increased them. But yeah, so Nunu, if you don't know, he's got his hands in everything. He's got his hands in the opiates, right? On distribution and everything else. He's got his hands in the rehabilitation centers. And he didn't want to let go. He didn't want to legalize marijuana because they are growing uh, marijuana. Sununu has his hands in this. 
So he didn't want to legalize marijuana before his crops were ready to go. So this tells me that his crops are ready to be uh, picked, produced, and sold. So now is the time to legalize. But we're only going to sell it through the New Hampshire State Liquor Store because he has run of all of that. So unfortunately for New Hampshire, we will not be looking at the same laws and regulations in the pot industry that Massachusetts has passed. And from what I've listened to about the Massachusetts is that they are trying to make it easier for the smaller people to stay in the game where Maine and Vermont have gone towards the larger uh, companies and they've squashed mostly all the all the smaller businesses. Um, I, I don't know too much about everybody's individual state laws with this. Um, from what I've heard, Massachusetts is actually one of the better ones, which uh, really surprised me. Um, there was multiple reasons why. Um, and if I remember the podcast, I'll put a link in the description below um, for you to click on. But as of right now, it's not coming to me. But Sununu is all in this. He's he's all about it, but he's only about it if he's making money from it, right? Nobody else is going to get into this, and they're not going to let us just open up pop shops all around uh, New Hampshire. So, I, I mean, yay, we're legalizing. Great. I don't believe the property tax because they always tell you something that sounds great, and then they don't do a fucking thing about it. But let's see what the House is going to say about legalizing marijuana. The New Hampshire House is advancing new legislation to legalize cannabis for granted staters age 21 and up. House Bill 1598 would put the state in charge of marijuana sales through the Liquor Commission. The benefits of this model, which New Hampshire already has the infrastructure in place for, is that New Hampshire will be selling a clean, superior, tax-free product at a lower price than any of the surrounding states. The first $25 million in profit would go to drug treatment programs, then proceeds would be split between treatment and statewide property tax relief. Tax relief, education funding, substance abuse treatment. These are concepts just about everybody in our state can get behind. While the bill garnered a strong bipartisan majority of 235 votes, not all state reps are on board. Simply put, New Hampshire has wildly, wisely held the line on marijuana legalization. We do not need to become the first in the nation drug cartel now. This bill's heading back to committee for more work what on the, the financials. What the fuck does that mean? It's a very tough path if it makes it to the Senate. But the House has shown repeated bipartisan support now for legal cannabis. The time has come to stop bogarting and pussyfooting around on this issue. In Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. What the hell does that mean? What what does that mean? What what does that mean? We don't need to be uh uh the the the, the drug cartel. What the fuck is that stupid bitch talking about? Seriously, what are you talking about? How many other states have already legalized marijuana? And we're gonna be the number one drug cartel? What the fuck does that mean? God, that makes me angry. This is so stupid. Uh, to still be thinking this way. How is it that these people are the people sitting there making these laws and, 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 and okaying this for, for all of us? Are, are we not tired of these fucking morons that supposedly we vote for and put in there and then some of the people that we voted for voted for these people in favor of us? Are we not tired of this structure we call democracy are we not tired of them constantly and always lying to us about everything are we not tired of them giving us promises and then when they can't keep their promises they just blame it on other people this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard of we've got what i think 38 38 states now that have legalized marijuana. I thought, personally, when we hit over half of the United States, the federal government would have kicked in legalized marijuana across the board so that everybody can benefit from this medicine. And yet you've got 
people in chairs still today that think that this is a fucking gateway drug and we're going to become some fucking cartel. What are you talking about? It's going to be sold in the same fucking place that you can buy alcohol, which I'll never be able to go and buy. I don't really step foot in, uh, in, in liquor stores anymore. It's a, it's a personal choice, and I think it's a personal choice that I could keep. But if they start selling marijuana, maybe they'll just add on a little building or something. Or maybe they will just add it inside. But why should we not be do, taking advantage of this right now? Why? 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 I think we should take total advantage of this. You know, whether or not Sununu uh, is 100% behind all of this, or he is making money left and right, and he's making it on distribute, distributing and making it on the rehabilitation side of things, I, I mean, I really don't care. I just want it to be legal. I don't want to feel like I'm doing something wrong anymore because now we know we're not doing anything wrong. And I'm really sorry about that. The bubbles. And it just makes me so angry that these are still the arguments we're having today. We're still having these stupid arguments about why it shouldn't be legal. This shouldn't even be a question anymore. With the way the economy is going, if we have an opportunity to relieve some of the people being squished by the taxes, like myself, if we have an opportunity to get more people help and rehabilitate them, then why shouldn't we? And if we have a way to bring in more money to educate our next generation then why are we not doing it? All right, so um, next one. All right, I thought this was intense. Now, if anybody else, the giant donut-shaped machine just proved a, uh, a near limitless clean power source. Now, everybody's talking about power sources. Everybody's talking about climate change and I guess Rogan's last couple podcasts, people were upset on one side and upset about the other side. Look, I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell you all the time. You got to listen to everybody. You got to listen to it all collectively. And then you got to decipher the information the best you can. Do I believe that climate change is real? Yes. Do I believe we are causing all the climate change? No. I believe climate change has been happening for a long, long, long time. And it's going to happen for a long, long, long time after I'm fucking dead and gone. Okay? But if there are ways for us to go electric, then this is probably going to be one of the better solutions. This machine is insane. I, I was blown away by it. I, I, I've seen the picture of it. I haven't seen this video, um, but it is absolutely wild um, what this thing can do and how it's going to work and how it's going to produce, like, no toxins. So... Let me play this for everybody. The dream of nuclear fusion as a clean and sustainable energy source has taken a giant step toward reality. Scientists say a facility in England has successfully generated fusion power for five seconds. The output was more than double what similar experiments produced 25 years ago. Look at this. Nuclear fusion generates tremendous heat by fusing two or more Look hydrogen atoms so together. Cool. The same process as the sun, basically. It's the reverse of current nuclear power, which uses fission to split atoms apart. But fission can be used to make warheads and also creates radioactive waste, which can be hazardous in the event of an accident, like we've seen at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. Scientists say fusion can't be weaponized, isn't prone to catastrophic failure, oh. and emits only helium as a byproduct, making it uh, ideal in addressing climate we change. We can blow up balloons again. Projects, as the latest experiment shows the technology is possible. 
So, so to give a 59 megajoule some context, that's the amount of power that about 35,000 homes would use for the period that we operated. It was only a short period, it was five seconds, but that was enough to prove that we could sustain the fusion reaction in, in a stable way. So yeah, it's about the power that 35,000 homes would use during that time. Holy shit. So they ran this thing for five seconds, and that was enough power to for, for 3,500 houses? And it produces helium? Aren't we... Uh, I, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we running out of helium? Right? There's no more helium tanks at Walmart. You have to, like, ask and pay more money to have your balloons blown up today. Uh, there's been a helium shortage, I think, for the last 10 years, and it actually has gotten drastically worse. So, so not only is this going to be safer... You can't weaponize it, and uh, it's going to power um, houses. I wonder how many of these you would actually have to build um, to power, you know, a full city. Um, that'll be interesting to find out. But it produces helium, so no more helium shortage, right? So overall, I think this thing is going to be uh, amazing, and I think it's really going to help with a lot that's going on because nuclear power is dangerous, right? Nuclear power is weaponized. Nuclear power, when it fails, is catastrophic to our planet. But so is so much more that we do to our planet, all right? We've had fires in the oceans. We had giant leaks in the ocean. And, and it's just, it's horrible what it does. It ruins so much. I don't even know if the Gulf today has recovered from the BP oil leak. I really don't. Because why? Because we don't talk about it anymore. And I don't dig into it because I don't live on the Gulf, so it didn't affect me. And that's the way of the world, people. If it doesn't affect you, you're usually not paying attention to it. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's so much going on in the world today. You can't pay attention to everything. But this is incredible science. They did show uh, somebody inside that thing. Uh, I mean, it is just so, so neat looking. I mean, here, real quick, giant picture of it again. I mean, they showed somebody walking around inside this thing, inspecting it to see how it did after it ran, you know, probably to check to see if anything came loose. Um, I'm, I'm really shocked that five seconds is all you needed to, uh, 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 to prove that it's sustainable. I, I don't know. That doesn't sound like enough time to me. Um, but I guess on the grand scale of things, if they've got it running for five seconds and nothing went wrong, then it should be able to run for however long it has to run to generate power for everybody. And hopefully this is a way that we can go electric with a lot of this stuff, but that still doesn't make up for the batteries and the lithium and all of this stuff and all the chips and the computer components and everything else that we need to go fully electric. Um, so what do we do about all that? You know? So this is <clears throat> one step in the right direction, but how many more pieces do we need to make all of this work? And even though California will be the first place to go all electric as of 2035, you know, are these going to be available? Are they building these in California now to get prepared for 2035? Or are they just hoping that, you know, when 2035 comes around, they're like, oh, well, no more gas. And then that's it. What are you, what are you doing with all the gas stations? What are you doing with all the gas-powered cars? How are you getting rid of all of the waste? Because that's what every car becomes. Every car becomes trash. Every gas station has to be gutted and dug up. You can't, to, if you go today and you find a lot of land, okay? Let's say it's, it's, it's in a city, everything's been leveled, there's a fence around it, and you're like, how about this property right here? And the, and the, and the real estate agent's like, yep, this property is for sale, but here's the problem. 
And they're like, well, what? what? What's the problem? They're like, well, this was an old gas station. Okay. Yeah, sure. Fine. Whatever. No, no, no. You don't understand. In order for you to build on this land, you now have to dig up those old tanks and you have to dispose of them. So what do we do about all of that? You can't just bury those tanks. Those tanks have to come out of the ground, and I don't know where the fuck they go, but they got to be disposed of properly. So I don't think I don't think that they've thought that far ahead. They've they've said some good things. They set a time and I think they're just expecting it to work. If everybody in California, which could be divided into four fucking states itself, go all electric across the board, you don't think you're going to run into power issues? You don't think there's going to be problems? You know, does every gas station become an electric charging station? Like, I'm just trying to figure this out. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of jobs lost. You're talking about uh, uh, millions and millions of vehicles that are now trash. So, even though being green, uh, wanting to help the planet, um, trying to control the climate change, is all great. It all sounds amazing. But at the end of the day, are we really capable of doing what needs to be done to have the lowest carbon footprint ever? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting, and I think think they are on the right path i just don't think they're going to be able to pull it off by 2035 i just don't i i don't know i think uh uh is that newsom no i don't know his name it doesn't matter but i think that's crazy i think it's crazy talk i don't think that they've thought this out enough i don't think 2035 is actually realistic um but i could be wrong uh let's hope i am wrong right because if anything uh i don't want to I don't want the climate to get any worse. So if we can kind of keep it right where it is, I think that would be a happy medium. I, I'm not asking for more than that, you know? But so I thought this was really cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, these ones are going to be a little bit quicker to end on, but I thought this one was fun. Uh, check this out. All right, so shocking video shows dramatic crash captured in Colorado Troopers dash cam. Watch this. Oh. It's absolute horrible sound, and I apologize. So let's see. I believe the cop is pulling them over. Right? Looks like he's being pulled over by the cop. Yep. Now the cop is up by the door. License and registration, please. He'll be right back. And then I think he gets in his car. And Jesus fucking Christ. Let's go back to where that crash happened real quick. What? Okay, I don't have a way to... Sl oh, my God. It just happened so fast. One more time. One more time. God. Oh, my God. Isn't that something? I mean, that has got to be so scary, right? And I'm wondering, like, maybe the fact that that car was stopped and the way that the other car clipped his tail light his 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 ass in there um and pushed him into the median maybe that is what uh saved that guy's life i mean you can see it right about where my mouse is i mean this is 
This is where he shoved him up on top of the median. I mean, just, just so scary. So scary. Woo. Hope that woke you up. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, then my last one is another dash cam, which I thought was crazy. I'm going to end on this one. Dash cam captures runaway tire smashing police cruiser. <laughs> I don't know why. I, uh, this is, I, I, I was just enjoying this uh, over the weekend. So let's check this out. Doom, doom, boosh. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Comes right there. Comes right off of that dually. Came right off that dually, dude. Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah. His, his, oh, wow. Did you see that? Oh, did you see that? That truck is driving on its drum. Oh, whoa, bro. Whoa, we got inside dash cam. Oh, that's that's his body cam. That's what that is. That's his body cam. But th if you go back to here, you can actually... Wait a minute, wait, 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 one more second. One more second, one more second. Eight seconds. Watch, there it is. Hold on, I'm going to go back one more time. Watch this dually, this dually, bang, right there. It comes right off. And then as you can see him passing the cruiser, he is driving on his fucking rotor. And then smash. Woo. Oh, my God. It just, like, I saw these couple things, and I was like, I got to share this. This is insane. Um, you know, two police uh uh, things going on. It's 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 just, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane what's going on. I want to know how, how is it possible, for your tire, to come off your truck, and you feel your ass end drop, and yet you just keep driving. You just keep driving. What? And it's not like the tire uh, got past him, but as you could see, as he was driving his truck and the tire came separated and the tire's moving forward, by the time the tire bounces up enough to hit the cop car, it's already at the driver door of the person that lost it. So how do you, you feel... And you look over and you see your tire. And you don't, I don't know if he stopped or pulled over or what, but I mean, I, if you've never changed car tires before, you probably don't know this, but that was uh, a four by four. So I'm assuming that they had a 16 inch rim. It was probably stock alloy rim. Um, those are usually like, 235s, a 235 tire, um, about yay wide, right? Um, 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 radial of 16, so that's the rim. And then, uh, what is it, 235 R16, oh yeah, 60, which is the, the width of the wall, all right? So when you have a 235 tire, you know, that is your tire width. Those tires fully inflated after balancing can be like 50 to 65 pounds. Now you add momentum and speed behind that. That thing is coming at you with significant weight and it's coming at you super fast. So I was I was blown away by this. It was it was crazy. I, I love I love how everything is caught on camera. It's fucking insane today. Um, but I do want to say thank you. Thank you to all my subscribers. All right. And all the new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you as well. Um, share rate uh, review. Give a thumbs up for the video. If you're new to the podcast, all right, give a thumbs up for the video. If you really enjoyed it or loved it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, means everything to me and basically nothing to you. 
Um, and of course, leave comments in the comment section. All of these things help the podcast grow, and I need your help to do that. Um, you can get free slowdown merch if you send your story to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com, the official email of the podcast. Um, and then, of course, you can follow me. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And with all that being said, I hope everybody out there has an enjoyable Thursday. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. I'll talk to you later.